Hello you lovely people, welcome back to my channel. Hmm. Shall we step back to 1989 actually and mainly in the early 90s guys. Uh, you know up until that point handhelds were a different beast altogether. You had your old tiger ones didn't you? And your um, you know your things like your munchman and your asteroids and what have you, your tabletop type things. But you didn't have anything that changed the bloody cartridges you know where you could put different games on them guys except for the microvision and that yeah that that really wasn't a good experience as you you will probably all know but then nintendo came along didn't they mm. with this beastie oh yes and they changed the whole landscape of handhelds because all of a sudden guys you could put cartridges in them. You could go out and buy individual games and put them in this thing, which was fantastic. And at a good price point, and with Tetris included into the pack, it was a winner, winner, chicken dinner. What a fantastic legacy that they would leave behind with this. But of course, there was other cheeky little sods who were trying to get a bit of the market, weren't there? And they thought they'd up the ante, and it started with Atari, guys, with the Lynx. Now, this is the Model 2, not the first one, um, but this is a chunky monkey. You know, you can see what the problem is, can't you? How are you going to put that in your pocket, eh? I mean, the Game Boy is a bit big to put in your pocket already, but this thing is an absolute beast. But they put a colour screen in it. I mean, look how chunky that is, look. But they did put a colour screen in it, but they also had... The batteries from hell in this thing. I mean, literally, you had to buy a lorry load of them. But like I said, guys, it had a colour screen in it. So it was a step up, but it was very expensive compared to the Game Boy. And it had no chance, guys. No chance whatsoever. Uh, so, yeah, that was a failure. Although I love it, it was a failure. In comparison to the Game Boy, they only took a tiny little bit of the market. So Sega thought, right, you know what, we're going to jump on that one. We're going to stick a colour screen in. We're going to make it not quite as chunky and not quite as big. And they came up with a Game Gear. Of course, still got a problem there, haven't you? You're not going to get that in your pocket. And again, guys, it took the batteries from hell. <sighs> colour screen. Yeah. By today's standards, um, it wasn't exactly the best screen, but it was colour, and it was lit up, which is the main thing. Now, of course, um, you know, they're dying now. We know that. They're, you know, the screens are dying, and you have to get them recapped, which is what I've done with this one. got it completely recapped. Sound as well, soundboard. But, yeah, they had a go, guys. They put a colour screen in it, and they did take quite a bit of the market, but nowhere near nowhere near Game Boy but as well as these big names guys like Atari and Sega of course there was others as well and one of the main ones guys and you know how much I love this machine and I've been on this machine so often on my channel in the past and it is the Supervision guys with its quirky cartridges which look a bit like Game Boy cartridges, but they've got open circuit on them, which is not a good idea, or open board. Um, yeah, with its tilty head on this model, guys, although there is other models as well, as you will see flashing up now. Um, yeah, they were going for it as well, guys. They still had the monochrome screen in it. They were priced at nearly half the price as well. So you would have thought, they may be onto something there, you know. They're pricing it at £49, and you get Crystal Ball, or Christ Ball, whatever you want to call it, included in there as well, which is a fantastic breakout clone. They must be onto a winner. 
No, they really, really weren't, guys. I mean, the games don't even compare. They really don't. But I love this thing to death now. Now, I've told the story many times before that I originally bought this before I bought a Game Boy. And at the time, of course, I was quite disappointed. So I took it back because the games were subpar compared to the Game Boy. I took it back, saved my pennies and got a Game Boy. But now I'm in love with this thing. And I've had one again in my collection for a long, long time time i'm still after the game boy style one that you saw flashing up um but yeah this is a fantastic machine guys to collect for now um quite expensive i have to say the games you can usually pick them up fairly well priced but the machine itself is quite expensive but the biggest problem for this machine guys was it didn't have a lot of decent developers for it but there was one guys there was one developer that stood out from the rest that did a slightly better job than bits and god knows who else worked on the supervisions software it was bon treasure guys bon treasure actually did make some half decent games for this now i've shown a lot of these games before but what i want to do guys is jump back on here and just take a look at bon treasure and what they managed to achieve on the supervision guys the watara supervision as it's known in certain regions and the quick shot supervision as it's known here in europe so would you like to join me guys as we take a look at a, a you know a third party developer for the watara supervision or the quick shot supervision yeah would you like to join me as we take a look at purely bond treasure games for this little beastie because yeah they did manage to snag a few only about three developers and this was you know bond treasure was was the biggest of the lot so yeah please join me guys hold on to your britches as we take a trip back to the early 90s guys and take a look at bond treasure software running on the watara the quick shot supervision back in a sec guys Right, here we go guys, we're the first one. Earth Defender. Let that music play. Not exactly suitable for this type of game. But, it's a bomb treasure from 1992. Right, let's go. Right, so you can see it is basically a shooter map. With different angles and you can actually go into the air as well like that. Oh look there's a bloody power up there, oh bugger. You can shoot me from here and of course, like I said you can go in the air and shoot me as well. I doubt I'm going to die in no time. Right, let's try one more time. Let's go for it again. It is actually easier to get more of them on the ground level. Oh, I missed the shooting. Oh, the bloody power up even. Right, 
That's fine, it's time to move on to the next Bond treasure, treasure. Right, here we go guys, the next one. Delta Hero, 92, obviously Bond treasure. Let's play it here. Hmm, as you can see, this is a, uh, yeah. I suppose their version of Zelda, really. It's almost like a maze game, you know. If it was in the dungeon, you'd call it a dungeon crawler, wouldn't you? All these things were... Huh. That looks like a bra. And that looks like a teacup. Interesting. As you can see, very exciting. I can't shoot any of them. You can't pick them up and we seem to have gone back to where we were. So yeah, you can see guys, this is a... Uh, hmm... It's actually graphically uh, impressive for the supervision. Only for the supervision, but um, it's very boring. But at least I've shown you it. Let's go and see if we can find this enemy up here. sure you can. I'm probably just doing something wrong. But yes guys, that is about the excitement of it. So I think we're going to leave it there and move on to the next one, eh? Because you might just fall asleep watching this. Back in a sec. Right, here's the next one guys. Super block. Play block. Fill block. Hit block. Yeah, we're going to play it. You can see guys what we basically got to do here. It is a wicked game this actually, really really fun. Yay, you got another exciting time. This is really really fun. Mm, okay. Yeah. We're getting all excited again. Oh, stage three. Hmm, this is a bit of a bugger, isn't it? Put them over there then. And put them over. Hmm, okay then. I can't do that. Stop giving me those ones. Mm, seriously. Okay, then. Right. Mm.
Пока. Guys, with the next one, Fatal Craft 92 Bomb Treasure, of course. So, we'll listen to that music in a minute. Alright, let's move on. <laughs> there we go, guys. This, of course, is a shooter. It might be a bit of a mediocre one, but it's a shooter. As you see, yeah. it's just what it's meant to say. Very slow paced, but uh, yeah. we don't exactly get you know, decent upgrades or anything. I'm not going to shoot you from the bottom of the <laughs> Oh, that bloody got me, look. Oh, yes, sod. Right, here we go again. Oh, it's not 
and from the sword to it. You can't get to them at the moment because they're. Oh, you're a bugger. Oh, I'm gonna wait for them. Oh, right. Time to move on. Where we go, guys? The police bus. I got me already. Oh, so huh. oh, good. Oh, 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 but there you go guys, <laughs> yeah, time to move on. Right, we'll go guys, we got some grand tricks. I like to say grand tricks. Yeah, grand prix guys. That music again. Right, there we go. Right, we're going to start first race in China. Okie dokie. Come on, you. Yeah. We're going to catch up, are we? this game before, I mentioned how at least it's got something in the background about here. It was linear with the pink, really. It's quite cool. Right, we're going to go to Hong Kong. I'm going to get a, you know, a nap of it, um, 
So we got that one, cool. Nice one. Alright, next one. I'm going to say another one again, but yeah, you yeah. know. Hm, whatever. Alright, so we're going here this time, are we? Hmm. Okay. to go up there, I don't know guys. I think we might be supposed to uh, do it from here. Maybe I know. Oh there we go, look got it yes. That was quite cool. Didn't get the power up there. That's what it's meant to be power up. Let's see if we can get it off. go guys i might have used emulation there to do it because obviously to film the screen of a supervision is like yeah practically impossible so i did use emulation for that and um, but it shows you that they did manage to snag you know just a few developers that were half decent i suppose for this beastie but it still didn't save it, guys. It didn't save it one little bit. I mean, again, look at the size of this thing compared to the Game Boy at the time. Look at the size difference. And then you really do start to realise where the problem was. Don't you look at that. Oh. I mean, it had a few nice little touches there. You know, with its tilty screen. So you could kind of try and get it out of the sun when you're out and about. Um, it had a D-pad that wants to rip your fingers apart, but you do get used to it. The buttons are very, very um, nice to press, but they're just very plasticky. The whole thing is very plasticky. I mean, the Game Boy is very plasticky, but it's a certain Nintendo plastic, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, it had its nice little points, but it just couldn't do it, guys. Not even with somebody like Bond Treasure on board and Sashen and bits and you know a few other developers guys that did jump on board it couldn't save it guys because the quality just wasn't there compared to even even this beauty guys the game gear i mean that has got a fantastic library stellar library behind it gorgeous bloody library and it's basically a, a master system repackaged and even couldn't come close to the graphical capabilities of the fantastic links so yeah guys the supervision ah, does have some half decent games guys i mean you saw them just now the bond treasure games are a little bit above the rest and there is actually some fantastic games amongst it some right hidden gems guys so yeah it might not have competed very well against this but it gave it a good shot and i'm glad it did because it's now in my collection. I've got tons of games for it. And uh, yeah, I love this thing now. I just wish I could get all of the other model. Maybe one day. But yeah, there we are, guys. Yeah, a look at Bond Treasure and their software on the Watara Supervision or the Quickshot Supervision. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. What did you think of those games? I mean, you've probably seen a quite a few of them on here before, but I've banged the Bond Treasure ones together. There was more Bond Treasure ones, but, you know, we went to eight games. Come on, you know what I mean? So yeah, comment below, guys. What did you think of these games? Do you, do you think they were half decent, or do you think they were just big, fat, smelly turds, the lot of them? But I'll tell you what, they're not. Some of them are actually pretty damn good. <laughs> and with that, guys... I'm going to say the usuals. If you're not subbed already, please drop me a sub. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling that way inclined. And of course, guys, don't forget to tap the bell icon on the all icon to get any notifications. Now, do you like emulation? Because obviously I was using emulation there, wasn't I? I was actually using 
uh, retro arch to do that. Um, so yeah, do you love emulation? Because if you do, I've got a fantastic group for you. It is over on Facebook and it is called the Ambernick Unofficial Fan Group. Me and the admin team will welcome you with open arms if you want to head over there and join us, guys. Anything to do with emulation, guys, whether it's portable or home system based. Loads of videos there, guys, with tech help and reviews of different handhelds and oh, just lots and lots of videos, guys. And of course, a fantastic banter with all the members. And then, guys, I've also got the UK Kraut Gaming page as well, guys, on Facebook, where we cover everything to do with gaming. Anything, guys. Retro, modern, whatever. Again, tons of videos there, guys, because lots of other YouTubers put their videos there. So there's plenty for you to watch. Again, banter galore with all the members. It's just a very, very fantastic place to be if you love gaming. Right, and then the last one, guys, is I have a Patreon. It is linked below. If you'd like to head over to Patreon, there is a video there that I made explaining why I set it up in the first place. And there are tons of other videos for you to watch as well. So yeah, give that video a watch, guys, of why I set it up. And then, uh, yeah, see if you want to join me on my Patreon journey. And with that, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'll see you in. Tschüss. And goodbye, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.